Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you another movie review. This time we're going to be talking about The Secret Life of Pets, which just came out on uh, July 8th, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I haven't really done a review on a movie like this before. Um, uh, it actually came out last week, by the way. Um, but I went out and seen this with my girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend works at uh, one of our local movie theaters, so she can actually get, you know, guest passes and guess them for free and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, which is, of course, nice. Um, even though I still do kind of like actually paying for movies I want to see, just because I like contributing to what they earn and such. But, you know, <laughs> um, I wasn't really planning on reviewing this one necessarily, but to be honest, uh, The Secret Life of Pets, I had an awful lot of fun with it, really. Um, I thought it was uh, actually a pretty good animated film. Um, now, of course, you know, you have people saying how it's a, pretty much exactly a copy of Toy Story, you know, with the structure of the plot and just the way certain elements end up uh, playing out and such. And I can see that, you know, I'm not going to completely deny that or anything. Um, but really, there are, like, parts of the story that aren't exactly like uh, Toy Story, you know. Um, and at the same time, it's pet, so it's obviously going to be different in some ways, no matter what. Um, and Toy Story, of course, is one of the greatest animated films of all time. Um, you know, even 2 is good, 3 was good. I'm not sure how 4 is going to turn out coming up, but I just say just enjoy both of those movies. You know, you don't need to go off and compare everything 24-7 like a lot of other people are. But uh, anyway, um, also got this uh, cop of The Secret Life of Pets as well. You got Chloe right there. <laughs> And, uh, if you guys didn't realize, though, uh, my favorite character is actually Chloe in the movie. I just love her. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about her in a second after I explain uh, some of the plot and such. Um, basically, uh, you have the, vo the voice cast, uh, they're all pretty good in this, you know, they're fine. Um, you have Louis C.K. as Max, he's sort of our main character, he's a Jack Russell terrier. And, uh, then you have... Ellie Kemper voicing Katie. He's the owner of. She's the owner of Max. And then you have Kevin Hart as Snowball. He basically ends up being an evil white rabbit plotting a, re a revolution with a. Uh, you know, like all the. You know, sort of like the strays and the shunned animals of, so of uh, society, which is actually a decent message for some of the mistakes we make as people, you know, with uh, what we do with animals or don't do with animals. It's kind of interesting, we're not going to get into that too much, because the movie does, and so we don't need to talk about that extensively. Um, then he also had uh, Eric Stone Street as Duke. And, of course, a lot of people know him for a modern family. But Duke is basically brought in by uh, Katie. And so you have Max and Duke uh, sort of forming a little rivalry with each other at first. You know, not really liking each other, being territorial and jealous and envious of the other getting attention or getting to sleep here or sleep there. Um, and really, uh, pretty soon after that, it becomes not so much about what the pets do when we're not there. It basically just becomes in a way what Toy Story did do. You know, they end up uh, going outside and they end up getting involved in all this uh, this shit. <laughs> and uh, it basically turns out that they get lost in the city. They cross over with, uh, you know, Kevin Hart's snowball. They basically have to try and find their way back home. So yeah, I, I, I get what people mean about the Toy Story thing, but still, just shut your mind off and enjoy it. Even though some people say don't shut your mind off, you should be able to think and still enjoy a film, which you can. Um... Then he had uh, Lake Bell as Chloe, and I just absolutely loved Chloe. And, and there's really not too much more to explain about the plot of the movie. You know, basically, uh, Max and Duke get lost. They cross with uh, Snowball, uh, you know, again, who's uh, trying to uh, bring up all these animals and, you know, build an army, basically. And, you know, they lie and sort of get in with him, saying they're, that they killed their owners and such, which is kind of a funny part. Um... <coughs> But eventually they find out otherwise, and they have to find their way back home. That's all there is to it, really. And it's fine. Um, then, like I said, Lake Bell is Chloe. I just thought she was the funniest part of it. Maybe it's because I, I own a cat, so naturally I would go to you know the cat side of things. Um, but of course it helps that she was fat, you know. <laughs> 
She's just adorable too. Look at her. And uh, she has this uh, big uh, sass about her too. Um, she definitely holds herself in very high regard. She has very high self-esteem. Or, well, maybe. She's probably insecure in some areas, but she doesn't like to admit it. You know, she's very sassy. She has an attitude. She is stuck up. Um, you know, she's, she's obese, yet she carries herself like she's the, you know, classiest pet in the city. Um, but then at the same time, the funniest part of it is that she actually ends up, you know, like, running into all these, like, uh, traps and sort of, like, uh, falling into everything possible, really. Um, she gets, she can get scared kind of easily. There's this part, I forget which character it was, but someone, like, slams against the window and you hear, hear <laughs> then she course flies off and clings to the curtains which fall down and then there's another part where she falls into these cheetos and then steps on cupcakes and so she's very accident prone <laughs> despite you know carrying herself with grace and such um so i thought she is very funny i would like to have seen chloe get more screen time um there's also this like little possible romance she has with this older dog they go to for help a little bit later which i thought was kind of cute <laughs> um, she doesn't really want it she tries to remind him that she's a cat but you know, Chloe does have some appeal to her, you know? <laughs> um, but, yeah, Chloe's just uh, great in this movie, and that's why I put her in the thumbnail. And that's, of course, the iconic scene where you see her, you know, trying to get to the turkey, or whatever it is in the fridge. And, uh, you know, just stretching, stretching, and finally jumping up there. <laughs> and, you know, she's a friend of Max, but she says she doesn't really care what's going on with him, but then, you know, of course, she ends up going with the others, so she obviously does. And, uh, you know, she gets very worn out when she, uh, you know, gets out of the big chase scene in the sewer. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, so Chloe is definitely my favorite part of the movie. Um, I also did really like uh, Jenny Slate as Gidget. She's this uh, white Pomeranian, and she ends up having a crush on Max and being, like, hell-bent on finding him. And then he also had... Uh, Albert Brooks as Tiberius. He's this sort of grumpy hawk. And, you know, of course, he sort of threatens to eat some of our other characters at first, but then uh, Gidget ends up uh, taming him and sort of putting him in his place, and he ends up helping out. And that's kind of it, as far as, like, the voice cast I want to talk about. Those are our most significant characters. Um, you know, some people were uh, kind of opposed to Kevin Hart in this movie. Um... But, you know, it kind of depends on how much you like or tolerate Kevin Hart. You know, if you don't like Kevin Hart, you might be a little bit annoyed by uh, Snowball in this movie because he does do a lot of Kevin Hart, you know, screaming and yelling and such. But I thought he was fun for the most part, and, you know, he does sort of have, like, a little character change at the end where he sort of turns more to the good side, and, and he ends up uh, getting taken in at the end himself um, by, a, by an owner. So, you know, his character development was fine, I guess. <laughs> Um, and I, I like Kevin Hart. I don't love Kevin Hart, but I thought he was fine in this movie. I didn't think he was, like, overly annoying or overwhelming or anything like that. Um, and like I said, I did like Jenny Slate as Gidget. You know, I liked uh, where she, uh, we would just kick ass. That was fun. <laughs> um, I guess I would have liked to have seen Chloe get more concentration. A big part of the plot also does, of course, revolve around, you know, Max and Duke, you know, trying to become better friends or not really trying they basically just go through shit together and then that brings them closer um and i thought duke was pretty likable as well um uh, and you know of course he at first he's shown to be kind of arrogant but then he you know, of course we find out he has a good heart then he actually uh, got lost and uh when he goes back to find his owner at his old house turns out his owner had passed away I would have liked to have seen them focus on that a little bit more. I thought there could have been more serious sort of like touching part like some anime movies have. I would have liked to have seen more concentration on how Duke felt finding out that his owner had uh, passed away. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You know, the movie is what it is. It, it was fine, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more focus on that when it happened or when the information was uh, put out there. Um, and of course, it goes the way you think it does you know they manage to escape from uh, snowball and his crew snowball actually ends up helping to save max and uh, duke at the end which is different um not well in a lot of anime movies there's no like character development with the villain you know they always they always just lose and then they don't necessarily turn good but sometimes they do in this case that's what happened with snowball um let's see and of course uh, they 
Duke and uh, Max both end up getting along, and uh, of course Katie comes home and is uh, just thought they you know knocked over some stuff and I wasn't really of course aware of the adventure they had went on. Um, there's also this viper in the movie who ends up getting uh, crushed repeatedly, uh, which I thought was a little bit brutal <laughs> um, for a kid's movie, but you know uh, there wasn't any blood or anything obviously, but still. Um, you know, there's not much more to say specifically about it, but uh, there's not really any more specifics to go into, but overall I just thought it was a really fun time. Um, I know people were criticizing, I know it's been getting sort of uh, mixed reviews, um, but it's making a killing at the box office. I mean, it's I think it's gone over $150 million at this point, and it's actually projected to uh, have over $200 million by the end of this weekend, which is really pretty impressive. Um, it's pretty shocking with the success it's made in the box office. Um, but yeah, it does really have a recipe to be successful. You know, it's a, uh, you know, kids would like to see pets. It's an animated film, so yeah, why not? Um, and even with uh, that, you know, Ghostbusters remake or reboot or whatever it is this weekend, apparently Secret Life of Pets is still expected to uh, win this weekend again, so that's awesome. Um, I definitely think it's a fun movie. I recommend seeing it. You know, it's pretty straightforward with what you get. You know, basically what you see in the trailer is what it is. Um, there, I wish there would have been some more uh, touching parts in the movie, a little bit more serious parts, but you can't get that with that reanimated film, and so it was fun for what it was. Love Chloe. Uh, I just thought she was completely adorable and uh, fun. She is my favorite character, but I liked them all for the most part. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about The Secret Life of Pets. Have you seen it? This is probably uh, the most different review I've ever done of any movie whatsoever. I've done horror movie reviews, I've done serious dramas, I've done war movies like 13 Hours, and now I've done Secret Life of Pets. Um, I have no regrets. I thought it was really fun. Enjoyed seeing it with my girlfriends. It was just a good time. No alcohol required. <laughs> so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Uh, next video will probably be talking about some promotional stuff they released for Season 7 of The Walking Dead. And uh, yeah, so catch you guys next time. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and the principal of dead .com. and uh, peace.